right boys and girls I'm back at it for another video this week we're gonna be doing something a little different last week we did the uh, rolled steel texture on the armor still have yet to finish that this has only been in real time 20 minutes uh, but in your time it's been a week so you saw me cut this from the sprue using the disc by nippers the 3.0s they are a little dusty from sanding uh, but I did leave a little bit and as you can see I'm going to take a little bit more off get as close as possible that one broke off in transit now we're going to take the most awesome tool I've ever seen and I'm so grateful that uh, scale modeler supply sent this over this is a ceramic blade it is not a hobby knife you can probably cut something with it but if you break the tip it's kind of useless but as you can see there is a nice little unsightly seam line now this is where this thing really shines so you'll take your scraper put it perpendicular and it's pretty much the same principle as using a hobby knife but it just seems to work so much better and it's almost impossible to gouge the plastic But what you see, and it looks terrible now because uh, it hasn't been sanded. But you could literally just prime and paint this and you pretty much never even know that that was there. Even with nubs. You may have to change directions a couple times just to kind of help the scraper along. But for the most part it's that simple get your excess plastic off you don't have to use a whole lot of pressure with this you just barely scrape even if you just do it a little bit at a time this is kind of a bad example too because this is a curved surface so it makes it a little difficult to just do one motion and surprisingly, uh, as you can see, it's a pretty tough little piece of ceramic. You can even do these little edges here. There's probably one up on this side. There is. You just got to barely give any pressure. I typically tilt mine, I don't keep it flat, I kind of drag it with it so I have greater control. Then you could take even just some 1000 grit. If I'd have taken greater care with cutting my nubs and not le left any stress marks, you'd have never even known that there was anything there. and voila you could sand this whole piece using the thousand grit take any surface surface imperfection surface imperfections off of it and it would look like a flawless piece perfect this gives me an excuse to finally cut these pieces out maybe on a darker piece it will show up a little bit easier and don't worry i will do a review video on these i want to use them a little bit more to see how they do before i uh give my honest opinion because even though I'm technically not sponsored by Dispy, I want to give a honest review on these not just something somebody wants me to do and that is also they kind of told me to do that so we'll use this curved surface yeah, it's kind of hard to see but there is a very noticeable seam line
no more seam line. Even on parts like these, where you've got this gap in between. I know it kind of looks unsightly. Once you hit it with some sandpaper, which is also a tool that you should definitely have in your arsenal, you'll never even know. So it looks like crap. So this one's gonna be difficult because it's kind of a recess. So you can take your blade, your ceramic scraper, Once you see no more shiny plastic, that means you have hit your recess and the entire surface is now uniform. And it's gone. It's vanished. I'm telling you, if you don't have one of these, you will definitely need one. It will drastically up your plastic crack game 100%. I've used my hobby knife, and that is something you can do. But you have to be very careful when doing that, because if you go even the slightest bit straight up, you can gouge it. And it actually hops across the surface, so you have to do a lot of sanding. Where the ceramic scraper, it makes kind of the same noise, but it's just the ceramic and the plastic making noise together. It is vibrating, but not near as much as something metal. Now there is another alternative you can do, and the only other place that I've seen, or the only other company that I've seen make it is citadel or games workshop they make a metal one it's really thick and that would work really well but the problem is with it being so thick it doesn't fit in some of the concave and convex surfaces where this being a about the size of your hobby knife is going to fit and the cool thing is just like a hobby knife you can replace your blades and scale modelers scale modeler supply does sell them so you can drop this break your tip and have replacement ones sent to your door now usa gundam typically does stock these because sms is an australian based company i think they get four shipments a year to the U to usa gundam store um, but they do a crap load when they do it so it's not like they're sending 20 or 30 paints or 20 or 30 items they're sending two to 3,000 items and paints at one time to stock them up for that three month period. So when they get these in, pick one up. Uh, USAGundamStore.com, use promo code NOTSOAVERAGE, get 10% off. Uh, SMS paints are epic. Again, I'm not really sponsored by them. We kind of partnered up. They did send me these paints to try. I've tried them before, even being picked up by SMS. I absolutely love them. The ease of being able to spray the paints straight out of the pot. You don't have to do anything. Now, if you are not an airbrusher, that is okay. There are plenty of other paints out there. These are very similar to, to Mia's acrylic lacquers. So you could essentially hair, or hand brush them, but you're going to have a bad time. 
uh, just like working with Tamiya if you're hand brushing, unless you're using the enamel stuff, you're going to have a bad time. It's doable, but it's definitely not something for the beginner. If you want the beginner, there are plenty of acrylic paints out there. But if you're an airbrusher and you want simple, ready to use right out of the bottle, SMS is where it's at. Awesome paint company. Check them out. Um, let's see. Scalemodeler.com.au proudly made in Australia uh, from the land down under they make some kick butt paints go check them out they also make some awesome tools this is the only tool I've used by theirs but man there were so many people that swore by this so yeah speaking of buying things uh, we're one step closer to pins they're being made as we speak they'll be shipped out at the end of this month and you know what that means? Uh, Patreon or patrons of the channel, five dollars or higher, will get a pin uh, sent to them. I was gonna do it for all tiers, but these things cost like two or three dollars a piece, so it's it's just not feasible. So if you're in the one dollar tier, you get a sticker or sticker pack. Uh, but if you're in the the five dollar and up tier, you get a pin. But they will be for sale on my Etsy store. I will drop a link down in there below. I do have my stickers up there and any amount that I make off of those goes directly back in the channel, just like Patreon itself. I'm trying to make this as self-sufficient as possible. So please, please, please help support my channel by buying stuff from my store, becoming a channel patron. I would love you forever. I'm also gonna try and set up soon live streaming. I have my streaming rig. I have two cameras so you can see my face and you can see what I'm working on. I got everything all hooked up, got my capture card so that my uh, camera that my friend let me borrow is, is ready to go and the mic wouldn't work because the model of camera I have does not have a mic. Probably a good thing because it would probably sound terrible. I've got my Rode mic which is what I'm using now to talk to you and it won't work through the computer. So I have to get a USB mic. But it was either buy a USB mic or finally get the pins. And I chose to get the pins. So I'll deal with it. But that's where you buying uh, stickers, become a channel patron, will help me buy those things. If you've got a USB mic floating around, I won't take no. Shoot me a DM, um, email, it's not so average builder at gmail.com. All of this will be in the link in the description below. But if you've got one lying around you want to donate it, help a man out. If not, it's no big deal. There's other ways you can contribute uh, any amount a month through Patreon. You buy sticker packs and then soon I will have those pins on there. But that is it guys. We are slowly progressing in the Zaku SMS build. This is something I've not done. I did it kind of on the Stein build but it wasn't it just wasn't. I'm taking inspiration from Geo Builds. If you have not heard of him, check out his channel. Uh, I will put that in the description below as well. Uh, he does some awesome clean builds. He stepped outside of his comfort zone a couple months ago and did a Barbatos build, a Masquerade Barbatos, and he weathered it and it looked amazing. Well, but he typically does clean builds and he's inspired me and he's also challenged me in a way. If you remember, we did the Stein Time build along uh, together. Well, I tried to do a clean build, I messed up, I got too rushy, things got chipped, that was my fault. This time around, on the Zaku, it is going to be a clean build. It is going to be an, a rough texture build, but it is going to be a clean build. So, Geo, I got you man, I'm going to do it. That's all I got guys. Have a wonderful day, and remember, don't just be an average builder, be a not so average one. Bye guys. Bye.